Greetings and salutations, and welcome back to Dark Souls, after what has been a couple of months hiatus, because I've been on summer holidays doing other things, I suppose. Other things that have involved not Dark Souls, because my god, I've been playing this, and it's sequel to death. But I'm back, because there are a few other things I still like to do, and I still like to finish my Let's Play. Now that we've killed ONS and got the Lore Vessel, the world really opens up, but there's a couple of things I want to do before I really um, go to other areas like um, the, the DLC areas. Now, a few things have changed. I am now a Warrior of the Sunlight, which, uh, which you go to the Sunlight Altar to uh, get sorted out, and if Slayer's there, he, you can actually join the Covenant by talking to him and you get some special dialogue. Of course, I tried to get I tried to get the dialogue earlier that I really like about um, if you can't join the Covenant and you go and talk to him when he's at the Sunlight Altar, he has a really awesome uh, he has a really awesome bit of dialogue that I really like, which tells you quite a bit about his character. But I could not get it because I joined the Sunbearers and he's like, "Oh my God, just a sun! Oh, there's another praiser out there!" And that's that's what happened. Anyway, Logan's still around. How are you doing? Hello there. What have you been up to? I thought that perhaps you'd gone hollow on me. So have you come to further your study of sorcery? No. That's, that's, that's not very good stuff. Well, okay, it is good stuff, especially uh, homing soul mass and soul spear. But, um... Like I said before, this character uses utility spells. So, uh, no dice. Heading out, are you? I too will leave soon. Undead or no, I shan't stay here forever. You have great potential. Don't go and die over nothing. Well, thanks very much, Logan. I'll see you in a little bit later when I place the Lord Vessel. Anyway, the agenda for this video is to go down to New London, further down this way. Down where you go through in order to get to Blight Town if you have the Master Key or if you go in the opposite way around. Around where that Valley of the Drakes area is. So, da, 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 what have I got equipped? Magic stuff, alright. This is going to be a very segmented set because I can't do this whole area in one go. It has to be... I have to go to a different area and kill an, a different boss entirely in order to go and finish it off. It's very awkward like that. I, I don't really like it, it's a bit gimmicky, but eh, whatever. It wouldn't be the first time Dark Souls has been a bit gimmicky. And it certainly won't be the last. Oh, no, no, no. Just wait until you see what comes up next. But, um... That's fine. Um, There's a few extra things I want to do anyway. But I will go and do that shortly. Let me just do a, uh, a quick check on the recording and we'll be down. Alright, and now we are ready to rumble. First thing first, for the area I'm going down to, do I have... Yes, I have two. Temporary Curse allows engagement with the ghosts. The only way to fight back against ghosts, who are cursed beings, is to become cursed oneself. The safest method, however dreadful, is to cut off the arm of the dead. That doesn't actually sound too bad when you consider how many dead people there must be in Waldron. Well, it's the land of the undead, so... Yeah. How are you feeling, Anastasia? Any, che any uh, cheerier? Leave me be. Nope! Not any cheerier in the slightest. Well, that's lovely. Isn't that just lovely? So, enough of that. We are heading down, down, deeper and down. And thankfully, I was courteous enough to send the lift back before I, uh... Before I did whatever I did last time I was down here. Oh, tell you what I haven't done in a while. I haven't talked to Ricker. Let's go and see if he has anything new to say. This is New Londo Ruins, by the way. Doesn't it just look pretty? All the horrible, sunken, decrepit nature of it all. That church off in the distance? Um, we're going there. We're going there. Paint me like one of your French hollows. <laughs> How are you doing, my prisoned budski? Ah, well then. What weapons have you brought? Go on, show me. 
Uh, do I need to repair anything? I do not. Do you have anything I want? No, you do not. I don't want to make anything magic, but uh, I think I mentioned before this is where you go to get magic stuff made. Anything new to say? Old big hat. Of course I've heard of it. Who hasn't in Vinna? He was a royal member of Dragon School until he turned undead. I hear he was quite the character. Only that was a hundred years ago. What interest have you in the old eccentric now? It's not like the undead don't normally age and die, and he's probably still hanging around in this area full of undead. You're joking, right? Come back soon. Smithing helps soothe my nerves. Don't let me wither away out of idle. I do find characters like that in Dark Souls kind of funny. You have all these people on these big epic adventurous quests that eventually hollow out and just turn into zombies. And then you have people like Ricker and the uh, the undead merchant who are pretty much just content to sit on their ass and just sell things and services. And they don't ever hollow. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. But, anyway. Oh. Get ready for the frame rate to tank, as there are a bajillion ghosts in this place, and ghosts are very, very. Ooh, let's uh, let's just call them difficult enemies. Not in a, not in the sense of actually killing them all, but well, you go through this area normally, and you won't be able to attack the ghosts. You won't be able to block any of their damage, and I think their damage is multiplied by the fact you're not cursed. Now you can go and get yourself cursed and lose half your health to go and fight them. Alternatively, you can do the not-silly thing and just use the transient curse. These are temporary curses that allow you to... Uh, hold on, is it getting a bit too choppy? Anyway, what they allow you to do is... Um, well, kill ghosts. They temporarily give you the curse status without any side effect whatsoever. You don't have to bother with any gimmicky cursed weapons, you don't have to bother with losing half your health, you just slap that on and kill some ghosts. Like, really, I don't know why they bothered with this. It's better than Dark Souls 2, where ghosts are just magically able to be cleaved in half by solid weaponry for some reason. But it's still just kind of naff. Oh, and, um... Down that way, the item there is a Firekeep Soul, but... In traditional Souls fashion, it's trapped and it's surrounded by ghosts and gravity is an issue. What you can do is, if you go down there early, you can just run through the area, pick up the Fire Soul, and then Homeward Bone out. And it's as easy as that. And that's generally what I've done with a lot of my earlier characters, because it's just really easy to do. It gi immediately gives you an Estus Flask um, reinforcement, so your Estus Flasks are stronger. And, uh, yeah. You can do that. Quite a lot of enemies and encounters you can basically just run past and uh, avoid if you're savvy enough. But it's not really recommended if you don't know where you're going and what you're about to come up against. I also find it kind of weird that this area is the only area you really see ghosts. This is the only one that comes up. So what makes this area special? Well... There's a... Ooh! Let me... Ah! Well, what makes it special is that you have these pissing enemies that come out through the goddamn floor and slice you to pieces, and it really fucks up with your attacks. But, um, anyway. Lore-wise, I don't know. It's... New Londo was supposed to be a refuge of the humans, and it's a place that is, in a sense, sort of plagued by dark, which I suppose will become clearer and less wankier later. But, um, yeah, it's the only place that ghosts actually show up, and I really don't know why. Ooh, parry and dagger. Very fancy. I think it gives the same amount of um, parry frames as the buckler and the target shield, so that's pretty neat. But, as I mentioned before, in Dark Souls 1, parrying frames were instant, or are instant. 
So there's no wind up as long as you parry at a convenient time. Like your reactions are good enough, it doesn't really matter. I cannot remember what this item is. Let's go and have a gander. There's also something a bit odd about the ghosts as well, and a lot of the non-undead enemies. I know it's like gameplay and story segregation and all that, but... The reason hollows come back when you reset the bonfire, I mean, it doesn't even necessarily have to be because of a bonfire. But, of course, undead don't die when you kill them. They, they respawn, they come back, and they do the same thing over and over again. And we all sing along like before. Oh, whatever. But with ghosts, that and non-hollow enemies, that doesn't apply. And even funnier is um, with undead enemies that you meet and kill that don't come back. <laughs> so, yeah, it's one of those situations where just don't think too hard about it. It's a, it's a video game. Like, you'll, you'll have these moments where it's just there for gameplay balance and gameplay reasons. Are you actually going to follow me? I'm actually kind of dreading getting into the church, and oh, actually, I completely forgot, but if I hang up over here, there's a dude up there. A very ominous and shady looking individual. And if you come here early, and you have, um, I think, black firebombs and bows and arrows or something, uh, his, his AI acts a bit weird, and you can basically really easily kill him and open up the area. But I'm not going to do that, because this character is... For all intents and purposes, not a dick. Unfortunately, I'm going to go for an entire area that is comprised mainly of dicks. And, as much as Claire may be a fan of the dicks or the whatever or whatever floats a boat, there is such a thing as too many. Especially when it comes down to ghosts. Because look at this! Look at how many of them there are! Look at them coming through the floor! So, excuse me, taking a bit of a time out. Alright, I'm back in business. Ow. Look at how many of them there are! Honestly. Crunch. Are we done? Are you ha have you had enough of the Claymore? God, this area is almost as bad as Blighttown sometimes, honestly. <sighs> right. Now that's even before you go through this area. Brave man struts! <sighs> Encore? Anyone? No? Good. You can run through here and basically just try and iron and geo wage up the ladder, but it's really not recommended. Look how many bloody ghosts there are. Excuse me, I'm on the ladder. This is exceptionally rude. You are committing a social faux pas in the Lordran world. Are they going to cover? Oh, yeah. Uh, when you're up on the roof, they don't actually come up after you. It does beg the question as to why they don't bother this guy, though. No. Yeah. Anyway, this guy is, uh, Ingwood. He is a Seeker. And I don't think I have the set with me. I don't, and I don't have the Talisman. But remember that, uh, the Crimson Robes and the whatever Talisman we picked up in Blighttown? It's from the same... from the same people. This is the only guy that's still around here, but... Uh, what was that character called? Well, anyway, the other Seeker was here, um, and then left the Blight Town to clear up Blight Town. And all. This is the only guy that remained. Well, this is a surprise. I get few visitors, save for ghosts. You have the Lord Vassal. Very impressive. I know exactly what your intentions are. You seek the Four Kings whom I guard over. This is the key to the seal. Cheers, my dear. The four kings slumber in the deep in 
the night are to use this key to what break the hell the is going on with the dialogue and open the floodgates oh and do not forget the dark wraiths reside in a dark void called the abyss but the abyss is no place for ordinary mortals although long ago the knight artorius traversed the abyss if you can find him and learn from him the abyss may prove surmountable yeah shame of that guy's dead isn't it so naturally he won't uh, he won't tell you all of that until you have the lord vessel and if you want if you want to get the key to the seal any earlier, you have to kill him. But what this guy does if you come here earlier and you don't have any purging stones for some reason is, um... Well, actually, I'll show you. Hello there. What is it? The key to the seal is now in your hands. I will help you in any way possible. As you can see here, he can break your curse. So if you got cursed in the depths and you make your way back to Firelink, um, well, congratulations, you now have a way to deal with the ghosts, I suppose, at the cost of half your health. You can come up to this guy, and he can break your curse for you. Of course, he's not in the best position to get to for that, if you're, uh, if you're new to the game. <laughs> but he's there, if, if you want. Uh, he also sells transient curses, but it's much better to farm them off the ghosts themselves. And this, which is pretty neat. Sacrifice humanity to undo curse. Abhorrent curses eat away at the core of one's very existence, and cleansing oneself of curses is no easy task indeed. Um, I'm gonna go pick this up because I, because I want it. New Londo was sacrificed to contain the dark wraiths. Mark my words: the dark wraiths are the enemies of man and any living thing that has a soul. They were never meant to roam again. And that's basically all he says. But it gives you an indication of what he's there for. The key to the seal is there to unlock the seal that he and his people put up to contain the Dark Wraiths. The Dark Wraiths are essentially the guys that go around invading and nicking people's humanity. So, of course, the seal did an amazing job, as you can see. But uh, we're going to go undo that for the purpose of killing the four kings that lie underneath the abyss. And as he said, you can't go down there straight away or you will just die. So that's what we're going to have to sort out. I'm just going to check something very quick. Oh, uh, great. I encoding CPU usage. Get a better computer. Oh, dear. Um, so that is why this is going to be so segmented. But... There is one other thing I want to do here after I've unlocked the seal, and that, that is get the very large ember, which unlocks the final tier I need to recurse myself. It unlocks the final tier of normal upgrade paths, so I can max out my claymore, which is nice because this claymore is pretty damn solid. And I'm going to want as much damage as possible for the four kings. The four kings are a very different fight to any other fight in the game, really. Most other fights, you can take as much time as you like trying to fight the boss. There's no big rush. You can whittle them away as patiently as possible. As, as much as you want, anyway. But with... With the four kings, the way the mechanic works with that, it's very weird as well. It, it's one that doesn't gel with the whole four kings, as you'll find out when we go into the fight. But it's essentially a damage per second race. You have to basically make sure you kill enough kings to, per king spawning in. So, so it definitely helps to have a fully upgraded weapon for that. And so that's what I'll be doing before. And even before that, I have to go kill another boss entirely. Again, a bit of a faff, a bit of a gimmick, but whatever. It's not that big of a fuss. Enough prattling on from me. We need to actually go and uh, get stuff. Now's me just getting the rare ring of sacrifice. I'm not sure if I clarified this before, but they uh, well, the rings of sacrifice allow you to keep your souls and your humanity upon dying, but the ring breaks afterwards. It's uh, it's no Dark Souls two stuff where you just get to repair it. But uh, rare rings also stop you being uh, cursed. 
And they're actually really quite handy in very specific circumstances, and in particular with a certain boss. So it's nice to have at least one of them. Anyway, enough. Enough of that. Let's actually undo the seal. Open the floodgates! And all the drakes outside got flushed out into the valley. Oh wait, no, because this is a video game. Oh well. Now, it's not going to be too much of a hassle to get the uh, the item I want. It just requires me being careful. I still have a very low health, and as much as dark wraiths are relatively easy to fight, and I have farmed them quite a bit, they are no joke. They can still cause you a tremendous amount of hassle, even if you have lots of health. So I need to be kind of careful about how I do this, because things could fuck up quite easily. There's Senor Dark Wraith number one, making his way over to uh, pulverize my face. There we go. What? Oh, cheat. You are such cheat. Get backstabbed. Yeah, that's a dark wraith. Have some very fancy armor. These guys are great because not only do they drop a, an awful lot of souls, but they they also drop the dark hand, which is really cool, and I want to show that off. Uh, they drop tide night chunks, which I'm going to need as upgrade material, and very, very, very rarely. As in, I've barely ever seen them do it, like maybe once or twice, and I really can't recall any moments. They drop Titanite slabs. Again, very rarely. Kind of annoying, really. There are so many normal upgrade path weapons I would love to upgrade, but I just never get enough slabs to do it. Especially with my strength build. Anyway, the item I'm after is through this area here. Fortunately, there's a fair few Wacker Dark Race and a thing called the Mass of Souls, and it's just about as fun as you, uh, as it sounds. So let's go pull this guy out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You got me. I'm on the ropes. I'm on the ropes. Arm it. Yep, that's right, I swat away a sword with my bare hands. What are you gonna do about that? Gonna die! That's what you gonna do! Right, now... This next... ...being could be a bit problematic. Can't even bloody see it. It could be right there, ready to spear my face, and I can't actually bloody see the damn thing. There he is! He's a fun chap. And that's his, uh, that's his party trick, as well as summoning some uh, horrible spirits. Come on, do your thing. Yep. You remember these guys from the catacombs? They're just as fun as they've always been. There we go. Thankfully, they don't respawn. Massive souls don't get respawn rights. Good. Hello there, good sir. Ah, oh, pissing blimey. Now, that's a problem. Like, I count on that running attack being reliably parried, but... Oh, they have so many wombo combo moves that you really can't afford to screw up. If you don't have a shield. Thank you for the demonstration. Now perish. As you can see. Now, that's sorted. We have access now to a shortcut, which leads back to that area where... 
the, the first building we went through is we went to went to uh, went into New Londo, and also this area up here. Which has a few goodies, but one in particular that I'm after. I suppose for little trivia tidbits um, about this area is, it's not a you can't actually be summoned or invaded in this area or summon in until you actually um, break the seal. So if you're worried about that when you're playing through, uh, feel free to take your time until you actually break the seal. But if you're really worried about that, there's loads of ways to avoid invasions. And to be honest, at this stage you have enough... Like, let's have a look. Well, what damage does my, my sword do? My sword does 347 damage. Not amazing, but it's also just plus 10. But that's still solid enough. Like, once you get to Anolondo and beyond, invasions aren't really that big of a deal. That's nice. Uh, that was it. There's a few other things I can go pick up, but that's really what I want to get first before I go do anything else. So, um, let's go back to the surface. Okay, for some reason Sigma is still here. Now then, I leave with the very large ember, which I can have a quick look at now, and the key to the seal. Huge ember of the highest quality, handled by the blacksmiths of Astora. Amazing lore. Um, let's find the key to the seal as well. The sealers, which um, Ingwood is uh, one of, and the only one remaining in New Londo, flooded New Londo to banish the Dark Raids and the Four Kings. The agonizing decision was made with the realization that countless lives and the robust culture of the city would be lost. The victims now roam the ruins as ghosts. How the hell they got curse cursed to the point of being ghosts, I don't know, but uh, it just happened. It just happens. You know, you flood a city, it gets filled with ghosts. Happens every Friday. Anyway, off to the Undead Paris so we can actually make some good use out of this Ember. How you doing, chap? Got something special for you. Oh well, it's a, it's a very burly left arm you've got there. That'll be a that'll be a reasonable price. I'll just uh, get my sword and oh oh wait, you're being hyperbolic. Ah well, uh, well. Thank you mightily for that. Now just leave the rest to me. Andre of Astora gets the job done. You shall see. I didn't need that left arm anyway. So yes, now. I can ascend my claymore to the highest upgrade level. I don't really want to do anything else with any of these. Um, this is being used for a boss weapon, as I mentioned, and all the rest of these are just um, things I'll upgrade at a later point. But anyway. Just three more Titanite chunks and a slab, and this thing will be plus 15. Hurrah! So with that settled, now what's my attack rating now? 369. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. What if I do this? 407. Nice. And of course, the stupid magic dust because weapon buffs in Souls games are just OP as hell. 605. 605 damage. Nice. So, I'm going to leave it here for a bit. Uh, what do I want to level? There are many things. But considering the boss I'm going to fight and the weapon it will give me, I probably want to get done with leveling up these. So, I will leave it there for now, and when we return for the set, I will be... 
I'll be go getting that uh, that ring from Artorius, the other one. So I'll see you then. <laughs>